Hey guys, I got a tutorial for you. This one, or in this one, we are going to be making abstract light renders and fiery renders. Well, render from scratch inside of Photoshop. It's a very, very interesting technique, and you can make a lot of different renders depending on exactly what type of filters you use and colors and stuff like that. I've made this really nice fiery render that we're going to make today. Alright, to start off, hit Control N. We'll go up to File New to create a new document. I'm going to make it 600 by 600 and call it Fire Render. Actually, I'm going to make it 900 by 900. Whoops. Control Alt I to bring up image size. 900. Okay, name this layer background and go ahead and fill it with black by hitting con or control delete because black is my background color if not just press D to get your default colors and X to switch them now hit control shift whoops hit control shift N and call this fire render and just go ahead and immediately convert it to a smart object so that we can apply non-destructive smart filters because cloud doesn't need any any layer contents to go ahead and work and that's going to be our first filter render clouds that's a very 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 useful filter for uh, creating any sort of effects with filters on top of clouds we're going to go to filter render and difference clouds that just applies clouds again but automatically applies the difference filter although it won't show up in the filters in the uh, blending options now we're going to go to filter render and apply difference difference clouds again and we're going to go to the blending options of difference clouds click on these little arrows and change the mode to what do you know exclusion actually this gets a very nice base for any sort of lighting effects and you can also from from difference clouds you can make lightning and all sorts of effects and it, you can almost make like water reflections and all sorts of things but next go up to filter filter gallery which is going to give you access to all these different filters start with crosshatch stroke length 8 sharpness 8 strength 1 that's good enough now go ahead and hit the new filter new effect layer and in this new one go to stylize and glowing edges in glowing edges take the edge width to 1 edge brightness to 12 and edge smoothness all the way up to 18 or to 15 I mean and that's good for now go ahead and hit OK and in this in the blending options of this layer of this effect I mean filter change the mode to color dodge that's just gonna wrap some nice textures around the clouds go ahead and hit OK and now go to filter stylize and glowing edges again and in these options accept the default colors maybe lower the uh, smoothness a bit and the edge brightness that's good enough go ahead and hit OK on that go to the blending options whoops blending options go to the mode and change it to color dodge again and lower the opacity to 30 percent this time now we're just going to give it a bit of a glow using blur Gaussian blur and raise the size to 8 pixels hit the enter key or press OK now go to the blending options again color dodge it's a very nice brightening brightening filter that is very image aware you can almost say and lower to 20 percent so we just get a little bit of a glow and now we're going to go to filter filter render lens flare just to get a little bit of a brightening effect 
it should be a 155 millimeter prime brightness should be at 161 percent go ahead and hit okay that's a obviously quite a bit too bright actually let me just check on over at my other abstract render yeah we're actually going to change the uh, blending options of this one to pin light and just lower the opacity to 30 percent just so we have a little bit of a brightening effect and now we're going to go into filter filter gallery again keep crosshatch there but change glowing edges to plastic wrap in plastic wrap take highlight strength to 13 detail should be at 8 and smoothness at 3 get this nice little effect hit ok and then going into the blending options again change it to color dodge and lower the opacity obviously to 30 percent now we got this nice little nice base and all we have to do next is go to filter distort twirl take the angle to 449 degrees that just gives us nice twirl effect so that we don't just have random pattern and now go into the twirl blending options and simply change the mode to multiply now we have a nice base go ahead and go over to the, your adjustment layers and go to gradient map alt click on it and name this fire color and now double click on the gradient or actually single click on the gradient and I'm going to change it to a lava that I've pre-made keep black to black change this stop which is at location 11 percent change these color values dark red change location 25 to this one a dark orangey red location 50 percent to a lighter orangey red location 75 percent to a light orange and then keep the last one at white hit OK and you get this really nice effect and now we're actually going to go to a get a brightness contrast layer to just to bump up the contrast a bit call this layer contrast and actually take brightness up to 20 and contrast up to 60 we're getting a really really nice fire effect but I'm just going to take a bit of this excess stuff away by well we are going to uh, first just take out your elliptical marquee tool drag a very very basic basic shape hit shift F7 whoops not that go to hit control alt D or actually that won't work for you but so go to modify feather or right click and hit feather and feather this about 75 pixels and then go ahead and immediately make a layer mask now go to mask panel and hit mask edge refine the mask edge which is the same thing as refine edge it'll bring this will bring up the refine edge dialog box hit smart radius and bump up the radius severely this will just this will just um be aware of the content inside of the mask and now we want it to be more aware so we get these little wisps of flames so with this tool right here which is called the uh the mat the refined brush tool or something like that increase the size to 200 pixels can't quite remember what it's called either right, refine radius tool and now just brush all around this So we make it reevaluate the image and just keep doing that until you get something really nice. Actually mess around with the shift edge. Possibly increase it or decrease it. Maybe let's have it alt and drag over this to erase this from the reevaluation 
Maybe reevaluate this even more. Maybe lower the smart radius. And that's good enough for now. And now we have this little abstract render. Now every time you do this it's going to be different because of the clouds filters that you have down here in difference cloud filters. So if you want a different effect just double click on it. Double click on one of these clouds and you get a different effect. Slightly anyways. I think I like that one right there. Let me try double clicking on clouds again. That right there looks pretty good actually. And now you can just drag this into any one of your images and use it as a regular light render or fire render. Set the mode to screen or color dodge or linear dodge. And there you go. You can just alter the layers, alter the, uh, I mean, filters to create different effects and different types of light renders. But there you go. I will be coming out with the design project very soon. It's going to be very very long and it's just going to be the, probably the longest and most advanced speed video ever created hope you guys uh, look forward to that it should be around in like a week week and a half and hope you enjoyed the tutorial